You're in. Hey, how long is it for an hour, half an hour, five minutes, 10 minutes? I, you know what I'm feeling? I'm feeling like we should do, I'm feeling that we should do in, we'll probably do around 45 minutes. Whenever it's natural for you. Oh, it, Harvey, it looks like we're live. Streaming out to the world. Then you know what I have to say about that? What's that? Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Wherever you're watching from in this world, hello. Happy New Year. It's the first Monday of the New Year. You know what? I have to say, Harvey, I can't ask for anyone else that I'd rather interview in the first Monday of the entire year. Now, if you're tuning in, I would just love for you to tell me where you're watching from because there's so much amazing things that come with community from all over the world. So for those of you who don't know, my name is Jake Sussman. I am a dyslexic and ADHD change maker, entrepreneur, and founder of Superpower Consulting, which is a mentorship firm for kids with dyslexia and ADHD. Now, since quarantine started, I have been interviewing many different people from parents to industry leaders to doctors to business leaders and everyone in between. Now, the thing is though, is that we all have at least one thing in common. It's that we all, at some point in our life, struggled with the way we learn in school, how to overcome adversity. Now, today, I have someone very, 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 very special, a dear friend of mine, the person that got me into this whole thing called dyslexia advocacy, ADHD advocacy, neurodiversity advocacy, the whole thing, Mr. Harvey Hubble. Harvey Hubble is an award-winning documentary film producer and social entrepreneur whose lean forward thinking approach to creating educational and social conscious media is defined by seeing the world through a different lens, thinking differently. Today, we're gonna to be talking about so much. I mean, Harvey's inspiring story, how structured literacy is gonna literally change the world and how dyslexia is a superpower. Now, Mr. Hubble, welcome. Brother. How are you, Jake? How are you? You're too kind and you're using your vocabulary darn good. I'm trying. I'm trying. It's, take, it's, it's taken a while. It's taken a while. So tell me, like, first of all, nice to see you. It's been, it's been a while. And I, I just want you all to know that Harvey Hubble is the reason why I'm here, is the reason why I am where I am today. Harvey Hubble has believed in me from the very beginning. Harvey, what, how, when did we meet? I mean, I'm talking- well, I remember, I remember, well, first of all, I'm not the reason. I mean, there's, a, there's you, there's nature and nurture. There's your great parents. Um, there's the great Helen Waldron who introduced us. And the yeah. day I met you, I, I know the exact moment that I met you, you were at Foreman School and, and we were premiering the sexy the movie nationwide and it was playing all over the place and uh so i could go any place to was just playing in a bunch of theaters all over the place and um so i live in litchfield connecticut it was playing in torrington connecticut i met you in torrington connecticut um at the theater and you were a scrappy teenager and maybe a little scrappy you were scrappy and uh, you were scrappy. Scrappy. truth be told truth be told yeah. And Helen, Helen uh, said, there is a young man I would like you to meet. And um, you came and you shook my hand and you looked at me in the eyes. And uh, that's how I met the famous Jake Sussman. That's how it happened. You see that kids? I'm telling you, if you're watching this, a good handshake leaves a lasting impression. A good handshake leaves a lasting impression. I will never forget when I saw Harvey it was when I love was story, told, this is a love story. Well, it, it is a love story. And by the way, Helen Waldron is watching this. So shout out to Helen. Hello. We got a lot of people watching. Thank you, this. Helen. You made you made a difference in the world like you always do, Helen. And yes. Jake does too. Yeah. Look, yes. the pebble in the pond. <laughs> you know, what I was told that Dyslexia the movie was playing. And for those of you who haven't seen Dyslexia the movie, we're going to tell you where to watch it because it is, it's a life-changing film. Um, I, I, I had to watch it. And it, it was so inspiring to see 
someone and to hear your story, Harvey, and I'm excited to dive into your story and, and like where your story began, but to just watch in awe at how someone had to overcome their own adversity and went beyond the thing of where we're literally watching your creation. We're watching your work. And I was so inspired and, and had no other option but to come up and introduce myself to you. And it was absolute first sight, just, you know, we're going to change the world together. Well, Jake, I mean, you know, I mean, there's really what happens in the world is, is we all overcome adversities that we have to do. And see, life is a really short thing. I mean, that's the weird thing, but there's only 14, 40 minutes every day. And when you wake up, you get to figure out what you're going to do in those 14, 40 minutes. You know, you could be a Rockefeller, you could be a Trump, you could be a Bush, you could be uh, any of these, these people who we know, you don't get 14, 41 minutes. You only get 14, 40 minutes. You mm -hmm. decide to do what you want. Yeah. So that's where the parents come in. That's where the kid, there's nature and nurture. And it comes down to this, man. It comes down to what do you want to do and what's your superpowers? I mean, I mean, I, I know because, you know, stuff we've talked about. The bottom line is, who are you? What do you want to do? And how are you going to do it? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And it's, it, and it goes so far on the, uh, on the side of, we have to know where to even begin, right? And I want to take us back to the beginning because Harvey, you you have done so much in your life for helping our kids and thank you so much. Thank you so much. And for those of you watching, let's give Harvey some love. Give, give, a, give a heart, give a like to Harvey because Harvey is on a mission so incredible. He is educating our country through film about our literacy problem in our country that we are going to change the world through literacy. Now, Harvey, can we go back in time? Yeah, go. Let's, let's go back in time. Where, where did it begin for you? What was it like when you first found yeah. out about your LD? And how did you have to overcome some of this adversity in school for our parents watching this with kids? Well, I mean, I guess, you know, I was born in 1959. So that's right, brother. I mean, that's like, that's a whole different world. But see, people knew and they didn't know. So I had this book. I, I went to kindergarten and I had the little train that could. Ah. But I lost it. I know, but I lost the book. I mean, I broke down, man. It was really hard. And um, well, first of all, I'll try to answer your question, but I'm the best worst storyteller ever. I love it. Aren't we all? Well, I know. But see, the thing is, what people have to invest in the journey. So I guess the thing was, you know, where it began for me is, you know, I liked pictures. I liked, you know, looking at things because I'm a human and I'm lucky enough to be born with two eyes and I could see, right? Um, but it, I was born, uh, and I used my left hand, but you know, and I want to, I want to talk about the Holy Trinity. I want to talk about the teachers, the parents and the lifelong learners. Okay. So uh, I, I couldn't help it. I was just born left-handed. Not my problem. I didn't mean to cause a problem. But the teachers back in, the, in those days uh, thought everybody should be right-handed. They weren't neuroscientists, and I'm not knocking teachers. You, you know, we're going to talk more about that because we're going to talk about what teachers know and teacher training. But making me right-handed in kindergarten, first grade, it kind of was like messing up my head. So now I'm just this graphic. That means you can't read my handwriting. I mean, I could become a doctor for my handwriting, except I don't know nothing about being a doctor. But I know how to write terribly sloppy that nobody can read. Does that make sense? No, I'm, it makes complete sense. Okay, so I became this graphic. Um, and the great Diana King said, I, I would have changed you back. I don't want to 
do her accent. Bobby, who's Diana King for our viewers who may well, not if know? If I sound like, well, some people know who Diana King is and some people don't. We're make, we, we, she's in, we're making a film about her called It's Good to Be King. Hmm. We're, so we're we doing a bunch of different, different things on it. But Diana, I'm probably not the person who can give the best description of Diana, but um, uh, a dear friend of mine, or dear tormentor, mentor of mine, who um, founded Kildonan and uh, a school for dyslexic kids. And she would work with the kids who were the most uh, dyslexic. And one of the things when I, when I said to Diana, so I'm jumping all over in the story. No, no, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. It's all right. You're doing. So you're great. my anchor then. I so got you. This is kind of like a day of like Jake and Harvey hanging out and just just talking. Yeah. No, because the, the, reason why, the reason why I want to know the reason why I want to know Harvey um, who Diana is because Diana King was was uh, she was a she revolutionized the dyslexia education, right? She was a she was a pioneer. Right. And you with your work, Harvey, has you've been able to bring to light some of this work. OK, so when you were younger in your years, at what point did you decide that you wanted to become a filmmaker? I don't know. I think you're stamped at birth, you know, uh, yeah. what, what people do. I think they're stamped at birth. And I think I think it's kind of like the parent and the teacher, you know, they have to be like archeologists. They have to be pulling the dirt away. And, and, and you know, they don't just do it with shovels, you know, they got, they got brushes when it gets in really close and they're pulling out these, these, these artifacts. And um, that's who we are as lifelong learners. Who are we? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm the best word storyteller. So Jake has a car, Harvey has a car. Jake has keys, Harvey has keys. But what starts Jake's car is not the same key that's gonna start Harvey's car. Right. And so once you get into that as a first grade teachers, kindergarten teachers, and the science is catching up to the teachers nowadays, I mean, that's a really hard job to be a first grade teacher, a kindergarten teacher. But those people- Shout out to our first grade teachers, second grade teachers. Seriously. Oh my goodness. I mean, that's what, that's another film we're talking about, Hopeville. When when we get there, that's the film that we're we're working on of how how hard these people work to unlock these kids. Well, Diana King was kind of a locksmith and she would take the kids who had the hardest time learning and she would go back in and rescue those kids. Mm. And you know, we made films, we're working on a film uh, after her death um, of all the people she touched. And, and this is where you and I, this is really what the story is going to be about with you and I talking tonight is like, I'm going to tell you something about me. I used to be like a couple pounds. I wasn't very big at all. And I used to do things. I couldn't even, I couldn't even talk back in the beginning, Jake. You know, you asked me the question. So, I mean, I used to, you know, pee, poop. I couldn't even eat. And I needed to have parents and other people around me. And eventually the parents, you know, let me go to a kindergarten and first grade and second grade. And I began to learn to read and write. Yeah. Right. But remember, we're artifacts. Each of us are our own unique people and we're there's never going to be another jake sussman there's never going to be another harvey hubble there's never going to be another any of these unique wonderful children from these parents that they have there's just not even if you have twins that's and, you by the way watching by the way that's you watching us go ahead harvey that's me watching what that's you as in our parents watching us talk right now oh now you're getting really crazy because it's like we're it's like our parents watching us talk. I mean, but someday you're going to be a parent and we're going to be going through this whole thing. This is like so. I know. Okay, so the bottom line is, the bottom line is what we know now and what we knew back in 1959 when I was born and by the time I got to school, 
these people didn't know as much. But now, as Maya Angelou says, if you know better, do better. She didn't say that. She's a better writer than I am. She said something more eloquent. But the bottom line, my brother, is every day there's freshly minted dyslexic children being born and going into a school system. And the school systems either know how to deal with the kids or they don't know how to deal with the kids. And that's where we come in to raise awareness and consciousness and knowing for these educators and these parents and these kids, it's gonna be all right because I just watched um, the film you were in, The Forgotten Child. Which we're gonna watch tonight. We are? Sure. It's yeah. like pop popcorn and everything. Surprise. So so you and I, I guess the reason we bonded and why we're friends is because we were both told we weren't going to succeed. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it's a painful thing. And, and parents hear that. No, no, I'm just saying, brother, parents hear that. But the bottom line is because you're going back all Mr. Frickin like back to the future on me. You know, we're like we're in the we're like there, but then we got to go back. I don't know what you're talking about, Jake. You're freaking me out again, man. Go on, you go. Let me tell you something. Yes, sir. That is when we have, when we when someone overcomes adversity, okay? We overcome trauma in our life. I believe that we have two options. And there's no wrong answer. Yeah, that blanket really did it. It was that, killing me, man. That blanket real. I was waiting for you to push that blanket behind her. Come on. I didn't have enough time in the prep. You no, know, I I really believe that we have two options. One is we live our life feeling good that we overcame adversity or well, number two is that we dedicate our life, making sure that no one else goes through what we went through. Okay. And here's the craziest thing. This is the craziest thing that I have. I just realized with, in our work with mentoring, I have no memory of my middle school years for someone with severe learning attention challenges in school. It was the worst, lowest moment of my entire life. I was three grade levels behind in reading forced to read out loud in class, being told I would never go to college, being told that I would always struggle with my social and communication skills. I think I'm doing okay with my communication skills right now, but you, you, like that was the lowest point of my life. And I- well, How do you remember that stuff? Oh, you read the papers. Did yeah, papers? I, I read the papers and I asked the questions, but through working with these kids, as much as we've been able to work, help these kids, they've helped us because it actually gives me a chance to bond with the younger version of myself in a time of my life that I wanted to forget. But now I'm talking to little Jake's all over the place every single day. And now it's a win-win because not only do I have a chance to work with a younger Jake, but this younger Jake can help older Jake. And we have a chance now as a community, dyslexic, ADHD, dyspraxic, dyscalculia, everyone gets a chance to work together to help move the dial forward. And that's the forgotten child. That's what the forgotten child represents. It's those who have been misunderstood for how they learn and need to find their voice. Well, you know, Bill Nye, the science guy. Yeah. He's the um, science guy, right? He's, yeah, he's the science, science guy. guy. Yeah. So he says see so i learned to read and the, the the thing no he didn't say i learned to read but i said i learned to read so but i learned to read and so i read bill nye so bill nye says everybody you meet has something you can learn wait a minute winston churchill here's here's a cool one winston churchill einstein and uh, mark twain all said something along the lines of like um the only thing that got in the way of my education was schooling. I mean, I, I'm taking three quotes and I'm, I'm moving it in. No, let's bring them all together. This is classic. This is classic Jake and Harvey right here. Yeah, this is classic Jake and Harvey. This is like what if Jake and Harvey are hanging out together like we're doing, but now we're like showing other people what you and I talk about in our spare time. So literally, if we're lifelong learners, because you could be a fixed mindset, or you could be a lifelong learner. You could learn from all kinds of things. But if you see that everybody is, is a potential lesson and you can learn something from them, 
which brings us back to what why you and I say we want to help. I mean, uh, you didn't get a teaching degree. I didn't get a teaching degree. No. We're doing like the advocacy that just sharing our stories. Um, that's another way of learning, and and it helps. Um, I think policymakers. I think uh, people who who are elected representatives. I think board of education. I think school superintendents. I think principals. But by teachers. the way, you, you know, you just said it too. You don't have to be a teacher in order to teach, right? You don't have to be a professional in order to 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 make an impact. What you can do is share. Because by sharing, someone else out there is going to read that. That's going through the same thing you're going through. And you're going to make an impact without even realizing it. That's the power of sharing. I like when you snap your fingers like that. What I, yeah, that's cool. So, I mean, I think the thing going on here is there's, there's a lot of different ways of, of education and there's, and I think the thing that people have to know, I'm going to go back to Diane King for a minute. And I said, what if, like we taught everybody to read because I was so dumb back in the day. I just thought it just, because we're only teaching about a third of our population in the film Hopeville. We talk about, you know, we can teach 98% of all people can learn to read. 98% of our species can learn to read. But we're in the United States, the great United States, are teaching about a third of us to read at grade level. And uh, so I thought, like, wow, wouldn't it be great to um, teach everybody to read? Diana King. For those who know Diana, I can't do her imitation because I'm going to sound like Mrs. Doubtfire. Um, the bottom line is, I have to do it. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. no, no, no. It's, not, it's not reading. It's self-esteem. It's Mrs. Doubtfire. Mrs. Doubtfire. No, but Mrs. Doubtfire was this great, this great person who could lead us through. And Diana King, like said, it's really self-esteem. So it's kind of what you do and kind of what, you know, we know everybody has, going back to Bill Nye, the science guy, you can learn something from everybody. That means every kid in your kindergarten class, every first grader, every second grader, their parents, you can learn something from all of these different people. And the bottom line comes down to, it's like, it's self-esteem. People have to have a self-worth. By the way, I want to also say this too, that we are creating a willingness to learn. That's what it is. You can teach kids all you want with literacy, which is so important. But if our kids aren't open to learning it, there's a whole journey that has to happen, an expedition the great journey of willingness to learn. And it's a journey that doesn't necessarily happen just in the classroom. It happens with a human being. It happens with relationship, with inspiration, motivation, self-esteem, which is what you're talking about. Because we can't have the self-esteem without understanding how we learn. Well, what's your passion? I mean, that's literally, that you know that. I mean, that's what you ask people. And I, and I think that's, that's the thing, Jake, is like, Right now, you know, there's a, like, I didn't expect that I was going to be making like just a bunch of educational films. Like, I'm not the guy to make educational films. I was like in sixth grade, I was uneditable, right? They're like nobody, you know, I wasn't that guy. Um, I just happened to have, my friends happened to be like neuroscientists and master educators, right? right? So. But the bottom line is, if there's, there's passion of what people find. I mean, I've, I got to interview all kinds of great people who have passion and do a lot of great things. And I live on a farm and I know the people, like not everybody reads, 
people like to read, don't like to read. As we, we've talked about, our, our society has failed us um, by only having a third of us reading at the, at the grade level. But everybody eats. I live on a farm, man. Like, you know what? Everybody eats every day, three times, maybe more. And so if you grow your own food and it's healthy and it's a good thing, that's not a bad thing to have somebody want to be like a farmer. Um, so are you saying that we are we are we putting too much pressure on our kids? Or is it is, is it a false expectation that we have? Or is it about pursuing what you're passionate about? Well, you have. To, well, there's a little bit of both. I mean, I, you can't ask me like, are we putting too much pressure on the kids? Like, you, know, no, you probably yeah. look at the internet and find it better than than me. So many, but but going back to Diana King, of uh, your self esteem, if you're in a situation, um, you want to know your worth. You want to know your worth in your family. You want to know your worth. You want to know your worth in your classroom. You want to know what you're good at. You know, when I interviewed Billy Bob Thornton, he didn't feel very good about his life. Um, but one teacher uh, had him direct theater. He went into the theater uh, in high school because there was girls there, you know? What was and, that like, by the way, interviewing him? Pardon me? What was that like interviewing him, Billy Bob Thornton? Well, you know, it's like, he's like, I mean, it's, a, it's like, a, he's a complicated, great gentleman, you know? I mean, he's, he's a really uh, smart, hip guy who's really honest. But, but the thing was, he, when one person believed in him, a teacher believed in him, and she let him, she says, you're really good at this in, in theater. Nobody ever told him he was good at anything. I mean, he's a really good baseball player. He was a good baseball player. He has a, you know, he has a band, you know, he became a pretty darn good actor, but he's a dyslexic who won an Academy Award for writing. But because one teacher believed in him, he became, he became this, you know, he went through theater. He started doing these other things. He could like monkey around with his face in front of a mirror. And he's like, whoa, whoa, I can make this character. I can make that character. See, that is the difference between a parent saying, stop being like a, a this or a that or a this or a that. You gotta like stop and listen. I'm not giving parental advice because I'm sure my daughter will chime in like pretty much all of my wonderful parent failures or whatever. But the bottom line is if you're an observer in life and you just observe what are we good at not my expectations for my child but what is the child what is the child's gift right. and that because every one of us is a child you're asking me about being a kid and well, we're talking about meeting you when you're younger because that's what happens right and you know what harvey what you're saying though but so amazing is that it's about entering our kids worlds it's about getting curious Right. The only way to know, we can't just look from an observer, but why, why don't we just get involved? Let's ask the questions. Let's say, hey, can you teach me? What, what, what is that? Your what, what is that thing you like to draw a comic book? Can you teach me how to draw a comic? Like, like you're good at that. You're good at that. You're good at that. But, you know, I, I you know, I do know that. I mean, I, I remember just talking about baby girl, talking about when she was like a kid. I remember taking her out. I mean, I live in Connecticut and uh, like, you know, we get blizzards every now and then. And I remember just taking her out and there was like this wind uh, blowing around like a, like, a, like a snow devil happening in our, in our yard. And I just put her right in this clean area and the snow was going all around her. And I could just see a smile on her face. And I'm like, I mean, she probably won't grow up to become a weather girl or something like that, I, I suppose, or a scientist of, of something like that. But, but she smiled and, and it's the observation of knowing and watching and that is where, where the parent and the teacher, and man, we're asked a lot of our teachers, you know, you have to observe these 26 kids in your class and you have to figure out how you're gonna invest in them. And you watch that, and you, when I mean invest, I'm going back to the 14, 40 minutes, you know, of what, what you can give them, what's the resources, and this person is, 
this person can draw good. This person is good with the with the the stories. This person is uh, this person is very talented, you know, as an athlete or whatever. The bottom line is, we only have so much time to be able to do this. The schools say you have to do this, this, this. The kids have to be at this grade level. I think we do put a lot of pressure on kids. I think, but quite honestly, as as Americans or humans. We have a lot of pressure on us all the time. Everybody has to chill the heck out. Yeah. The heck. The heck. Good catch. This is going straight to Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> but Harv, ah, this is fun. This is fun. And you have a lot of wisdom. And you are just so respected in this community because of your wisdom. And because of the fact that you look at the world differently and you, that's okay. Well, it's a learning difference, Jake. That's the one that I found, you know, that's, that's what I, that's the big thing that I found. Like I get to go around and ask people questions like, oh, well, why do I have a camera? You asked me that. I was like, because I can't freaking write. You know, because nobody can read my handwriting. And so I don't even, my guys in the crew don't even like, I don't even shoot anymore, but I was like, they, they kindly listen to me every now and then when I, uh, when I talk, but the bottom line comes down to, you know, there's, there's interpretations of these great stories and all of these things that are happening out there, you know, Jake, it's, there's things like, like all of these, all of these, these adventures that happen in the 14, 40 minutes that you wake up you know, you're going to sleep most of your 14, 40 minutes. Well, I'm not sure most of them, but you're going to be sleeping. You can wake up and you really have a decision of what you're going to do. But when you're in kindergarten and first grade, you can't quit your job. You can quit your job. I remember the day you called me up and you said, I'm quitting my job. I'm going to do such and such. I remember when you said that, I was like, oh, Jake, man, have you talked to your parents? Have you done like when you were quitting? I remember that day that you quit and you started your new world. I remember that day I called you. You're like, you're what? <laughs> and, and, but look at you, you're, you're happy and you're passionate. And what if we lived in a world, here's the world I want to live in. Tell me. A world where everybody lives their passion and yes. everybody, everybody follows their dreams. And so what we want to do is we're going to find out. So when the educators come and work with a, uh, a kid who is um, what they used to call dyslexic or learning disability, you know, it's like, no, 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 it's learning difference. How about this one, a learning difference? We're disabled. If you see Dyslexia the movie, hey, can I do a plug? So when you see Dyslexia the movie, my favorite, when you see Dyslexia the movie, can you, oh, there we go. We're gonna, we're gonna go to the website, let's check it out. Hold you know, on. when you see Dyslexia the movie, there's a scene in there where I talk, to um, an educator and she said, well, if they don't teach you how to read by fourth grade, then they've disabled you. Oh, there you go, check that out. Wait, hold on, here, hey, Jake, talk about that and take a look at some of that stuff. Give me like half a minute, I'll be right back. Hold on, okay. you're, you're no, like no. because I know that is crazy. Okay, talk about the movie, just say whatever you think about it. I will say, I'll say, Harvey, it was nice seeing you. I'll talk to you later. You All see, right. This is why you got to love Harvey Hubble because any conversation you have with him, you're going on a roller coaster. You have no idea. It's an adventure in and of itself. And I will say when I was working for Harvey and I worked for Harvey, I must have been in high school and I was staying out on his farm helping him sell dyslexia the movie which we will actually watch the trailer. Um, you know what? Let's actually watch this trailer now. I think that'll be kind of fun while he's uh, doing whatever he's doing. What do you know dyslexia? Sex what? What is dyslexia? I have no idea. It is a learning difference. I know. It's enriched my life. I know that it is a very special brain that gives you that abstract thought pattern. It just means that you're able to look at things a little bit different. Learning difference? I like that. That's great. 
I think a lot more people would be apt to recognize it in their kids if it's called a learning difference. When I realized what they had done, it was just horrifying to me. I was so nervous and scared about going to school. The teacher would say, where's your work? I didn't do it. I think the most powerful influence you could have as a parent is to constantly underline what the kid can do and make a big deal of it. Mom and I were in it together, and she taught me to fight for myself. My drama teacher actually let me direct people in the class. It was the first time in my life where somebody ever said, wow, you're good at this. A long time ago, our people used to think that these people were very, very, very sacred. It is with sincere respect that I award your diplomas today. Yay! Determination. You have a lot of determination. Wouldn't you say that's true? Dyslexia, the movie. You can make a difference in the world and help make a positive change in someone else's life. And once you do that, you'll be really glad you did. So dyslexia, watch out. We get ready to fight. Nice. Uh, Jake, Jake, that was nice. That was like taking me back to visit a couple of old friends. That was nice. Yeah. You know, when you when you get up and leave, I gotta I gotta keep everyone engaged somehow, you know? No, 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 no. That's what was but life is about adapting, you know? Right. Okay, so look at this picture. Look at this picture. I like that picture there. I took that from like, you know, remember the Beatles when I they you get all those celebrities in that one room. Yeah, right. So um isn't that great? But that's literally what it's like to, uh, you know, you just ask everybody the same question because nobody's an expert. I mean, you said some really kind things about me, but but if you ask everybody the same question, um, then you begin to get a lot of wisdom from it. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, that's some... Uh, some fun stuff that was nice to watch that was good i watched i watched your trailer um oh, we're about to watch this no we're gonna watch the forgotten child now well but the thing is is it gets a trip down memory lane when we make these things it goes back to 14 40 minutes again like when you wake up you're gonna do whatever you want in in the world and if you're really lucky you're living your dream you're working in a world that you want to do and you're gonna have you're, you know, let me tell you about um, disabilities. I'm able, I'm able to do this. I'm not able to do that. But everybody's like that. So you figure it out. And, you know, especially for the parents who get a little bit worried. Can, they, what? You go, finish up. You go. No, I think that it's very important. You have to, and you invest in a child for the teachers they have to realize and, and and again i'm going to say again for a second time you invest in their abilities and you let them find what they're good at and and um encourage it can i tell you something this is an analogy okay. that, I, that i've learned over the past year doing this work is that while every human being has a brain we all have a brain right well yeah I like to hope at least, though. Freaking Jake, uh, I love him. Okay. No, None no. of us have the same mind. No, every no, human, being, no, every human being has a brain. None of us have the same mind. Yeah. It, everyone, doesn't matter what the label is. You can have anything. It's, we all, they're all human being. Even twins don't have the same mind. You know? So with that being said. The fingerprint, Jake. The, the twins don't have the same fingerprint. Um. So that's that's the brilliant that's the brilliant part, and even like when it comes down to to DNA. So like when I was a kid, this is my favorite one. Well, I have a bun bunch of favorite ones, but my teachers would say to me in my hometown, they're like, "You are not like your sisters." I was like about like about six, seven, eight years old. I'm like, well, let's see. I'm not like my sisters because. One, they're my sisters, and I'm not like them. But, 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 but their mindset is like, okay, so I got a couple smart sisters. If they're watching, they're they're not as smart as. Anyway, but the bottom line is, but but they're, 
But I, they, were known to be, they were known to be very smart sisters. And why am I not like them? So that teaches us like what the teachers back in those days knew and were thinking. It's like, well, no, we're not going to be the same. We, we are unique. We're like Jake's key. They're like Harvey's key. What starts the car? What gets us into the apartment? What gets us into the house? It's uniquely different. And that's why it's such a hard job to one, raise a child, to be a be a educator, any kind of educator. I'm not saying teacher, I'm saying like a principal, a school superintendent, anybody who who signs up to be on the board of education, these are people, these are these are heroes. They should really take their job because they are creating, they're building the foundation of our society. They're building you know, if they're really proud of our nation and proud of the world that we've built, then they have to think and they have to invest. They can't make somebody be something that they're, they're not. They have, to, they have to do that archaeological dig and find out who is this person and where can we put this person into our society? That's what I think. Did I talk too much? No, you didn't. Well, that's kind of where, like, stru where structured literacy comes into all this, you know? where we have our educational systems explicit of third world instruction, baby. What? Explicit instruction. Yeah. It, it's evidence-based, it's evidence-based information of, of knowing how to unlock each of these kids because we can, we can educate. This is what the film Hope Fell, the, the film we're working on now is all about the fact that, and we went to Waterbury, Connecticut, where they speak 60 languages. There's 110,000 people there. They speak 60 languages. Imagine being a first grade teacher there. Imagine being uh, a kindergarten teacher in that environment. And you're going to, you're going to find the potential. You're gold mining, you're finding these kids. And then, then once you get your treasures, you're passing them into the next grade. And, and the bottom line is evidence-based education, evidence, Evidence-based education is going to say, this is the thing of how to unlock the key to each of these, these kids. And they're all going to come at you in a very different place. So it's, it's not going back to when Harvey was a little kid and we're going to make everybody right with their right hand, which creates problems in, in the kid who is expecting to write left-handed. So I'm like trying to catch up on that stuff. And they're trying to, to get their their goals and I can't read, I can't write. And it's a nightmare. Yeah. I and mean, it's really a nightmare. And you really have to have uh, the right adults in your life advocating for you as educators and parents that are going to find what you're good at. And that's, you know, whether you're gonna be an engineer or a filmmaker or, you know, I mean, you know, Plumbers and mechanics are the people and the, and the guys who come and fix your furnace, uh, you know, and, and a cold winter night. Those are the, those are the bloody freaking heroes in this world. Uh, the people who it's not just one size fits all. They're looking at your furnace in your house and they're going to fix it. And then they're going to move on to the next job and the next job and the next job. And it's like, those people are the people who are really important in our society. And you know, those are the people who we really have to, uh, okay, is, are our kids all going to be lawyers and doctors and whatever else? Bottom line is, it's all important. Everybody's important. It, it, uh, everyone's important. It's all important. And if you do the thing that you love, let's put it on a scale. There's so much pressure. I mean, the, the, some of the kids that, we, that, that we're working with in our mentorship program, I mean, we hear so much pressure from parents on their kids wanting them to do something that they aren't interested in but just because society wants them to be to be an accountant because it pays well or to to do the thing that it's when our kids are able to pursue a dream that they have an interest and it may not make sense but to them it does Right. I quit my job because of a, a video that we made together. To really? I was like, no, there was not, that was not true, Jake. Don't say you quit your job because of a video we made. Tell Jake, me. 
No, no, come on, man. Because like, no. you quit your job. I was like, I was like, I can't believe it. I quit my job because the video that we made launched a movement. Is that better? Well, yeah, but no, no, you launched a movement, Jake. Not the not a video that we made. Oh, that yeah. this is like this isn't going to be like. So you should roll that video because because no no because I got emotional when I just saw the trailer for just the movie because I mean I made that like I don't know how many you know you know me and the crew a long time ago we made that and it was kind of like visiting with old friends and when I saw your uh, your film today and I saw parts of it and I was like that's a darn good. That's a darn good film, damn good. But the bottom line is, Jake, it's your story and it's your passion. And you told the truth. And so as a, as a kid who, that's what I was saying, seeing when you, when, you know, you were not gonna succeed, I was not gonna succeed. I mean, that's kind of fun stuff, Jake. Like we did okay, man, we made it. We did. But not everybody makes it, Jake. But so it there really is. It's really about the parent, the teacher, and the lifelong learner. I mean, I I believe that. That's what yeah. you know. That's what our our all of our films are about. That. But including this one. Let's watch it. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm gonna get more popcorn. Keep going, come. My friends, I kindly ask you to please shut your eyes so you can fully understand the story that has left me so traumatized. Imagine yourselves as the child that always smiled. You were wild, you were beguiled, until the day you were profiled. This is the story of the forgotten child. Now what I am about to tell you will truly make your stomach churn, they said. I have major concern, Mr. and Mrs. But your child simply can't learn. The child was labeled disabled. He was told face to face that he should stop his chase to a higher educational place because he couldn't read any book in the bookcase. This is an absolute disgrace. Those words should never come out of anyone with the knowledge base. From that point on, he was taken out of the classroom all day long, from homeroom to three hours past eating in the lunchroom. He became paranoid, full of anxiety and scared because he was told he was impaired. It felt like nobody cared. He was misunderstood. As a result of educators thinking he was no good, he just needed someone to think that he could. You see, negative labels are destructive, counterproductive, and obstructive. Now, i like to ask you to please open your eyes. To some surprise, that forgotten child is standing before all of you guys. He defied the lies of this public educational enterprise. You see, what they didn't know was that this forgotten child had an epic thirst for knowledge. He refused to acknowledge, you will never go to college. He took those words and turned them from frustration into motivation. He was lacking that academic foundation. So his parents pulled him out of this cultivation they call public education. Let me bring something to rouse. Just imagine your academic journey like the construction of a house without the proper support. That house will fall short. He was finally put in a place where his mind was no longer a disgrace. It was a place that built his academic base as strong as an iron case. They saw him for everything he got. This isn't no school of thought. It is something that the public educational system simply did not. And it was the first time that the forgotten child actually smiled since the day he was profiled. Now let me mention one of the most notable individuals in all of mankind with the mind that was also defined like mine. Let's take someone like Albert Einstein. 
a man of credibility that had a learning disability he was lacking much valuability despite educators much liquidity but that didn't stop Al's life journey to discovering the theory of relativity. So take a minute while I spit some poetry. What's the difference between you and every person the eye can see? Truth is, there's nothing. Because each and every one of us have our own unique ability. Einstein said it perfectly, that everybody is a genius. But if we judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life thinking that it is stupid. Don't you see? A wise man once told me that the power comes from the young people knowing that they can change the world. Don't ever give up your shot. Your minds are all you've got. It's time we change this public educational melting pot, turning your minds into a robot. You get my gist? In this world craving to coexist, it's time that we work with the kids that are missed with those who fit the mainstream schools perfectly, and then those who learn differently. Together, I insist. Thank you. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, you know that's Rusty Dyer, man. He's a good filmmaker, right? Okay, that's that. It uh, takes a village, man. It takes a village. Oh, uh, you feel that one, don't you? Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, but you know, but there's a lot going into something like that. I mean, literally, Rusty and the crew, those guys. You know, they kind of got in your head and walked around, and that's what has to happen. And uh, your words are good, your words are true, and um, you meant it, and that audience knows it, and those, that was an audience of parents and educators. And uh, yeah, you made a difference, but I, I don't know if you should have quit your job. I, kind of, I just... I don't know. Should, should, should I have quit my job? Should we ask the oh, audience? You're doing great. No, no. Right now, you're you're changing the world and you're helping people. And and when I see the stuff you're doing, how many, how many, you know, excuse my my bad. I speak one language and I speak it poorly. Your mentees and your mentors, but you're really making a difference. And um, and I think just being able to share your information with as many people as you can get and 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 it is all the, there's only three groups of people in my world there's the educators the parents and the lifelong learners and then you grow up as a lifelong learner and you become a, a parent or an educator or something else you know mm -hmm. yeah For, unless you become fixed mindset and then you don't want to be lifelong learner anymore we don't want to be a fixed mindset. We can't have our, how can we inspire kids to not be fixed mindset? Well, I guess you had to quit your job and I guess you have to keep going. And, and I guess, you know, fixed mindset, I think is, is the thing when parents put or educators put into these young, you know, I'm a farmer. So you put into these young seeds. So I could tell a seed all day long. If, if I take a seed, it's a tomato seed. I say, you're going to be a carrot, you're going to be a carrot, you're going to be a carrot, but it's a tomato seed. It ain't going to be a carrot. It's going to be a tomato. So it's going to feel bad. It's, it just needs to be what it's going to be. Yeah. So as far as fixed mindset, you know, you, once you know everything that you need to know in the world, I mean, that's a fascinating place to be. And it happens in every career you go into. But if you find your passion and you have your self-esteem, I'm going to go right back to that self-esteem thing. Yeah. And you, then you have these two ears, you can listen. You have these two eyes, you can learn. You know, you can see. I mean, we can see and hear and touch and learn. A, a lot of different ways we can learn. And I guess the big thing is is we just want to be able to 
to unlock each each learner and they can't just be like the young kids because sometimes they might have skipped stuff and something happened when when we were young and we didn't we didn't get it we didn't learn but we didn't learn the way we needed to learn but if we can go back and repair it and figure out how we need to be able to increase our knowledge in our particular passion or field of whatever we do for work anyway i don't want to sound crazy or sound like i'm rambling but you're not rambling it's what we need to hear it's what we need to hear we need to hear this because let me tell you something harvey this is day one of 2021 i mean it's day four but it's monday day one right monday i love that monday day one i'm with you man this is a I not only love Mondays, but I love the first Monday of the year because this is a completely blank slate. It is a book. It is a book. That's this. Now we have the opportunity to draw or to write if we can, or speech to text, whatever we want. <clears throat> and this is what you're saying, Harv, is exactly what we need to hear. Because I can tell you, for our families and our people watching this, they're going to turn this off. They may look at the journal that they're going to have and think about what are they, what are they going to create in this world in 2021? This is the year of the comeback. This is the year of change. There's a lot of new coming on. And let me tell you something, 2020, while it was an absolute not what we expected, you know what 2020 taught me, Harv? 2020 taught me that we can't live a predictable world. Life's about unpredictability, being adaptable, learning how to change and, and move forward. And, and, you know, it's like when you're studying for an exam and you study hard enough for an exam, you know that you're going to get an A. But that's not life. So, in 2021, we're going to enter this year with- I didn't a know that, Jake. If I studied for an exam, didn't mean I was going to get an A. Back I, I didn't get an A anyway if I studied for an exam. So like that that goes out. <laughs> right. But but it sounded good when you said it. But it's like you... In theory, it sounded good. When I was in my like, you know, motivation moment. No, but in, in all seriousness, we need your words. I think we all do. We all do. And I do. I mean, you're one of, you're, you're my mentor. You're my guy. You're, I really, like, I, I really, I admire, and you are one of my biggest role models. So. Oh, I don't my, know. I, now you make me feel like I have to live up to that. But, but I can just tell you about the, the fun and the life that it goes in between. Can you, please, can you, can you? Well, I know. So one day, remember you interned with us, you know? And you interned with us and we were on the farm and one night, this is like, this has absolutely nothing to do with anything. Yeah, you know where we're going. We went into the chicken coop and there was a skunk yeah. in there eating the freaking eggs, which was like, which is like a problem because what do you do? Do you, you know, it's a skunk <laughs> in your chicken coop eating the eggs. But we outwitted the skunk and we convinced the skunk I mean, come on, Jake. This is a true story. I was there. I was there. This is a true story. I think you might have taken the picture because, like, I mean, we were like, there are a couple of filmmakers. What do you do when there's a skunk in your chicken coop eating the eggs? And you're like, okay, you're out of here. You got to leave. You know, you got to like talk them out of there. And then skunk ended up finding another skunk. They got married. They had babies. I don't know if they got married, but they had babies. And then they, that was another story. Forget about it. I don't want to talk about how it ends, but. But you know, the bottom line is, is that's life. Those are things that happen in life. And you wake up in those 14, 40 minutes, you're not gonna predict that's gonna happen in your life. And next thing you know, is you have this thing and you going back to what you said, you adapt and you figure out how to deal with skunks in a chicken coop or anything, you have to adapt and that is what I think, because life is kind of short. If we got lucky, if we got lucky, we're 100 years. Most people don't live to be 100 years. So we have to roll all of our life into 
this amount of time that we're given and all of our lessons, and we have to make something from all of this stuff. And sometimes people write down their lives. This is what, again, our film Hopeville is about. I'm excited to watch it. Well, we're working on it and I don't know. And, and Rusty, the guy who worked on, um, who worked on the forgotten child is working with us and the same crew with those lovable guys, Jordan and Jillian and Ian and, there's a couple more characters are working on the film. We're still taking all this crazy information in. And one of the things that, that we learned is once these kindergarten teachers and these first grade teachers are giving you the foundation, what they can give you is the knowledge of books and stories of people who lived before. And they're gonna take their life experience and they're gonna give you those stories. And yeah. I, to me, I think it's just really important to be able to interpret other people's lives because there's, there's empathy that comes to people by who learn to read. And they, I guess it's either, I think it's nonfiction. You know, yeah. You know what else? And, and I think that what we'll do, I mean, I don't want to stop because like I can, we can literally talk forever. <laughs> Um, but I want to give people a chance to ask questions and the, our feed has been blowing up. You know, that 54 people have shared our videos since we've been talking over the past. I don't even see it. How can I see that? Cause I'm such a, I can't even see anything I'm on my Facebook page. It should be there. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that Jake. I'm a, I'm a Luddite. I'm freaking oh. born in 1959. Oh, 1900. Well, I was born in 1995. So, you know, not, I'm not too far off. Age is relative. Um, Wait oh a minute. God. If all things are relative, if all I, things are relative, and my mother's my relative, are all things my mother? Actually, I was reading a book with my fiance Alexa. Isn't that crazy that I'm engaged? Oh my god! Talk about a compensating mechanism. You marry Alexa, so every time you just ask Alexa, tell me such and such. I mean, you guys watch are like this, watch this. You ready? Hey Alexa. If anyone's watching this and your Alexa went off, let me know because that That's usually happens. that usually happens. Um, no, but we were, I was I was reading this about generations and how yeah. it was talking about how if you go back twenty generations, you'll have over one million ancestors. Oh yeah. If you go back thirty generations, you'll have one billion ancestors. So the idea is that everyone is actually interconnected because if it starts off with one parent, two parents, then you have four grandparents, then you have eight grand grandparents, then it keeps doubling every single, every single generation to the point where you'll have over a billion ancestors. That's pretty wild. Well, no, no, I think we're all, I think it'd be, well, sometimes people don't get along with their families. So, but I think women. Let's just oh my gosh! Wait a minute. Time out. I just have to report that multiple people's Alexas went off when I just said that. That's too much. I don't even know how to how to that work is, this because it's one hundred fifty nine. Too much. Too much. Multiple people's. Well, I'm going. Oh, my I, brother in the house. Okay, so I want to close this off shortly, but I want to ask you one very important question. You ready? Yes. Hit me. The question, what is your superpower? Oh yeah, 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 that's an easy one, Jakey. Oh, so, oh, easy, okay. I mean, but everybody's supposed to know their superpower, but that's what they're looking for. And um, mine is, I mean, you know, most of the people know me, kind of know, um, I'm, I make good teams, I can, you know, but it's it's going back to what we we're saying. It's like finding the people that you work with and let them do. Wait a minute, this is kind of going back to what we we're saying. Did you set this up? This is the whole entire thing. That's a broken question. The seed turned into a plant, and I've planted. Like, see, no, no, no. Just come some kind of a, so you bring the beginning, in the middle, and the end. It's so all right here. So this is the this is the exciting conclusion, Jake. Yes. So this is what. So the whole thing really is is my superpower is if I work with people. Um, oh, yeah, you want you can turn off that video so you don't hear yourself talking because that's. Do you hear me talking? 
I mean, I don't know if it's like, if it's distracting hearing yourself talking on the video. Is I don't like, hear myself talking. Okay, you're good. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Good. That's encouraging for you to tell me that I'm good. I'm trying but to leave build build suspense for our audience. You know. Oh. Well, okay. Well. So the fact is, if you let people do what they want to do, and like I think. The reason I think I build good teams, my superpower is that I build good teams is because uh, I see the success and the smile and the happiness that people do. And if we all were to build our enterprises and our life on working with people who just want to do, they want to show up and do what they do they want to do their job and they're good at it. Yeah. That's not a bad thing, Jake. So the answer to the question is I build good teams. Ah, a superpower. That I don't think I can ask for a better way to start to start my week. Not at all. So I hope next time you can do a round two at the farm. Oh yeah. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. What do you all think? What do you think of Harvey? Should I have him back on here? He's okay. He's all right. How does this thing work? <laughs> this is story of our lives, you know? I love Jake. All right, Harv. Yeah, yeah. I love you, brother. Thank you again for, uh, for, for coming on with us. And for our audience watching, if you do have questions for Harvey, please don't stop asking. Um, if you are curious and learning more about dyslexia, the movie, or what Harvey is doing, please find him at seedling.tv. I can post it in the Facebook group. And if you are interested in the Discover Superpowers Mentorship Program by Superpower Consulting, which is my mentorship organization, uh, we do connect young kids and adults with ADHD and dyslexia with mentors with ADHD and dyslexia to have someone that has been there and that can relate to them in ways that many may not be able to. So if you have questions, feel free to reach out to me, reach out to Harvey. We're here for you. We are a big community. Look at this action. I mean, I'm telling you, Harvey, 54 people have shared this. Thousands of people have seen this within the past hour. Thank you all for all that you've done to support us, to support this movement. Happy New Year and get ready. We got some fun interviews coming up. Harv? Hey, hey you know what they say? You know what they say on the farm? You, 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 you all come back now, you hear? Yep. Yeah. That's an old. That's an I got to work on my, I'm, I'm going to work on my farm talk so that we'll do a live interview at, uh, at the farm. You in? Yeah, With I'm the ready. chickens. With the in the chicken coop, all right. In the chicken coop, yeah, we'll do the whole thing. We'll go through the whole place. Done, done. All right, all right boss. I love you. I love you. You too, Thank brother. You. you too. Thank you. Much love and respect. Peace. You too. Bye, Harv.